you experience. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. This is theCUBE, our telecast. We go out to the events and we extract a signal from the noise and we share that with you. And I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and we're here with Michael King of Data Direct Networks. And John, you know, we know DDN, uh, a, a company with a heritage in, in high performance computing. And Michael, you, you're in the cloud area and you focus on the media and content business, and John, as we were just talking about, it's a different animal, isn't it? Yeah, well, DDN is a company that's been around for a while, and what I'm really impressed about DDN is, is that one, they have some good technology, but they're self-funded startup. Uh, they're doing very, very well financially, and they're growing like crazy, and recently uh, uh, poached away from HP, Jean-Luc Chatelain, who really was heading up HP's information governance program at HP and was doing an amazing job, and then he came to DDN, and he's heading up the strategy and the technology strategy over there. And, and since, has been really putting out some pretty good products. One of them uh, we evaluated called the WAS, uh, Web Object Scaler. So you guys have a huge booth here, great presence, great location. Uh, it's a packed booth. So tell us, what's going on at the booth, and what's the buzz at DDN and NAB? Yeah, well, so, you know, I listened to your intro just a few minutes ago there, and all of those things you talked about are fitting right into our sweet spot, right? The fact that these cameras are all getting higher resolution, right? You talked about 3D kind of going away, but the thing we love about 3D is it, it doubles all the data storage, right? So when you look at it from a data storage perspective, 3D, things like uh, James Cameron doing 48 frames per second, that kind of stuff, fantastic in this industry for us in terms of building up big data, right? Big data and media entertainment. On the show floor, we've got several demonstrations going on. We've got a unified workflow which shows all of the creative suites from Adobe, Apple, and Avid all working together nicely. As much controversy is going on in that industry at the moment, it's fantastic yeah. to have a solution that allows those people to make some choices possibly about their future. We've got some great things in terms of flawless performance going on uh, for the broadcast world, and then we've got our cloud collaboration going on, as you mentioned a moment ago. Let me ask you a question about the market here. Obviously, on the film side, we're talking about the academies of arts and, quote, sciences. There's a lot of science, and the film guys are totally into the science side of it. Broadcasters, they do just enough to look good on camera, but their back office IT is less than stellar in, over the years. We were talking about tape. Um, that has to change. So what are you guys seeing in, in the trends, both on the high end, uh, studio side and also on the broadcaster side around how they're dealing with their data, what are their requirements, and what are some of the things that's changing how they do their business? You know, the thing that's interesting about the broadcaster side of the world, right, is, is the, the flux to HD obviously was huge for us as well, a 7x increase in the amount of storage that people are doing, right? But it's really <laughs> about, <laughs> exactly, Sorry. it's really about the quality <laughs> of service. So, you know, you think about it, you talked a lot about technology a few minutes ago, and keep in mind, everybody, I'm from the marketing department, so apologize when I say some of these things. But it's really not about the technology for us. It's about the people being able to work elbow deep in technology, but really still feel like an artist, a broadcaster, or, um, you know, a journalist. So we try to take that level away from the storage and allow it to be easily usable. And that's true in the broadcast space as well as film. Now I've noticed, uh, Michael, that even people from the marketing department in DDN are pretty technical because you <laughs> guys have, you, you do, you have a really rich heritage in high performance computing. So um, what are the similarities in terms of how you leverage that high performance computing in this space, in this media space, and what are the differences? Yeah, you know, it's fantastic, right? If you look at our heritage in HPC, and HPC for so long was way out there by comparison in terms of performance and quality required, as you mentioned moments ago, right? But now, the two things are really just coming together, right? When you actually look at uh, Livermore Labs, which customer of ours, right, and the data that they're doing and the processing that they're doing, you can literally just go over to Technicolor and, and see almost exactly the same thing going on, right? If you didn't know what business they we're in, the amount of data flowing in and out and the, the requirements are very similar. Yeah, so you've done some other, th you know, interesting things in, in HPC, with some, some interesting buffering, and, and it's, some of that stuff's not cheap, oh. you know. Um, are you able to, to bring that down? We were talking about the economics. Are you able to keep pace with things like the cameras and so forth? Is, is the storage industry in general and DDN specifically able to keep pace with those shrinking economics? It definitely so. And it really looks at the total cost of ownership, right? So yes, will the system be expensive out the door? It will be. But when you look at the ease of implementation, right, the ease of scale up and scale out, the ease of maintenance, it really comes down at the end of the day to be much better solution for them. The, you know, it's about having 24 people trying to run a storage system versus one guy trying to run a storage system and being able to store the same amount of stuff. And a major theme here is workflow. You're hearing a lot about you know, the productivity of whether it's editing, post-production, and so forth, and you're mentioning a, a solution. What are you seeing in terms of you know, the productivity impacts that customers are demanding, and how are you responding? Yeah, well, as I mentioned before, I, the nonlinear editing situation is interesting at the moment with the changes that are happening with Apple and the things that Adobe was talking, you were talking earlier about with Adobe. And so what we're finding is that people are looking to experiment. 
right? They're trying to think about where they're going to be 10 years from now in that and what kind of suite they're going to be running, what's going to be their workhorse. And so it's a really interesting point in which to have a workflow that allows for all of those to work together. So how about cloud? I mean, it's in your title. Yep. Um, what is cloud to DDN? It's a lot of things to a lot of people. Give us your angle on cloud. Yeah, so uh, Jean-Luc yesterday spoke at the Cloud Computing Conference here, which is a subsession of uh, NAB, and it really is about collaboration for creative people. It's a follow the sun process, right? I can literally get people in LA starting a process. It's going to go over and worked on in India. It might get worked on in London. It gets worked on in New York, and it's fun done by the time they get ready in the next morning in LA. So it's really about collaboration and follow the sun. As a fan, what's the time to market advantages? And obviously, it's pretty obvious when you see follow the sun. But what are you guys seeing from the customer base? Where are they in the adoption cycle of this follow the sun strategy? I'd say it's still in its infancy. I really think you know there are a lot of kind of clunky things in terms of uh, how they're transferring those files and moving them around the world. Unfortunately, at this point, are making it uh, relatively difficult. But I think in the very, very near future, that's going to be much more of a reality. Literally saving something in New York, opening it in India the next day. So, what do you think of the Intel Studio experience? It's fantastic. This is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is really wonderful. And you know, I'd like to say thank you to Intel. We're also taking part in their uh, storage zone uh, QR scavenger hunt, and we've had a lot of people come by the booth because of that. They're looking for storage solutions. So, uh, thank you to Intel. Yeah, for you guys that. been Longtime partner of Intel. I mean, have enabled your business. I mean, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So Intel has been a fantastic partner of ours. Several years ago, we made the switch over to put all of our right. technology on Intel. And it was, that was that, that was a big decision. You know, it was a huge yeah, yeah. decision, and it's worked out really right. in our favor. So uh, there's no doubt. <laughs> Thank you for being here too. But <laughs> it's also worked out very much in our favor. Okay. All right. Well, DD, and thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. say hi to John Luke for us. I certainly I will. My it. pleasure. Thanks nice for coming on theCUBE. Okay, appreciate it. Dave, what do you think about the uh, storage wars now inside here, inside NAB? Well, we're seeing, like you said, a lot of disruption. It's a very storage intensive business. Everybody's going after big data. Everybody has a little different perspective. I think DDNS actually has one of the most interesting perspectives. It's not big data washing. A lot of times we say big data washing. I think, I think organizations that are coming at it with really an understanding of what's required and really with a clean slate approach are going to do better. And I think the advantage that you you have you know coming at it from the HPC industry is those two worlds are coming together and so I think that is really what what is going to disrupt the whole storage business within the media and entertainment space.